In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a list of over 100 foods that contain zero carbs. These foods are particularly beneficial for low carb ketogenic diets and for anyone with insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and PCOS who are trying to manage blood sugar. Now, I posted another video maybe a year and a half ago now that had 75 foods with zero carbs, and you guys loved that video, so I thought I would take it up a notch and today give you a list of over 100 foods. So that's what we're gonna do. Today, I'm gonna be giving you a list of foods with no carbs. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Today's video is sponsored by Butcher Crowd. For 100% grass fed, pasture raised meat, 100% wild caught salmon, and bone broth delivered straight to your door across Australia, head to healthcoachkate.com forward slash butchercrab. Now, as I said at the start of this video, these foods are going to be particularly beneficial for anyone eating a low carb or ketogenic diet. Anyone who is looking to lose weight, boost their brain power, reverse insulin resistance, and type two diabetes will find this list useful. And that is because when we limit carbohydrates in our diets, our bodies switch from using sugar for energy to burning fat instead. It starts producing ketones, insulin drops, and fat burning increases. And contrary to what some people say, the state of using fat for energy, which is known as ketosis, is not dangerous. It is a normal and healthy metabolic function. At a very basic level, your body essentially has two sources of energy, ketones from fat and glucose from carbohydrates. When we eat carbohydrates, they're turned to glucose by the body and can be used for energy. This is a quick source of energy for the body as carbs are broken down relatively quickly. But the downside is that there is only a limited amount of glucose that can be stored in the body, in the liver and muscles. So if you are relying on glucose for energy, you need to be consistently eating carbohydrates throughout the day. Now, if our bodies didn't have a backup source of energy when glucose ran out, we would die. And that is where ketones and ketosis come in. When your body senses your glucose stores are low, your liver starts to make ketones from fat. And ketones are an alternate source of energy. But unlike glucose, where your body can only store a limited amount, around about 2000 calories worth, your body can store much more energy as fat, which can be turned into ketones. This is literally stored as fat on your body. Even someone who is very lean can have over 100,000 calories worth of energy stored as fat. And of course, if you have more stored fat, you can have more stored energy than this. Generally, you need to have less than 50 total grams of carbohydrates in a day in order to be in ketosis, but this amount can be higher if you're active and lower if you're sedentary. This is significantly lower than the average modern day person who consumes between 225 and 325 carbohydrates in a day. So when you are trying to keep carbohydrates low, less than 50 in a day, it can be really helpful to know which foods contain zero carbs. Hence the point of today's video. But enough chit chat, I just wanted to give a quick explanation about why limiting carbohydrates can be beneficial for anyone who might not be familiar. So now let's get into the list. Meat and seafood. Now I'm calling this a zero carb list, which it is, but some of the foods we're gonna talk about today do contain trace amounts of carbohydrates. One egg, for example, contains 0 0.5 grams of carbs. But honestly, foods like this that have such a low amount, it would be so silly to not include them on this list. Yes, they're not technically 100% zero carb, but such tiny amounts is not going to impact you. I just wanted to give this disclaimer before I'm called out in the comment section. Now, meat and most seafood really are the best low carb foods, but you do have to watch out for anything that is marinated or comes with sauces on it because these are usually loaded with sugar and carbs. <laughs> Beef 
chicken, pork, turkey, lamb, mutton, bison, goat, duck, rabbit, deer, bacon, quail, goose, and kangaroo. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have had kangaroo before. And then for seafood, salmon, sardines, mackerel, halibut, tuna, shrimp, whiting, crab, lobster, cod, trout, bass, anchovies, and herring. Fresh and tinned seafood are both good. Just make sure if you're buying tinned that you're buying it in spring water and not in oil. If you can't find it in spring water, then olive oil is going to be the next best option. But just avoid vegetable oils, soybean oils, etc. We'll talk about why you want to avoid these oils a bit later in the video. Cheese. Now, different cheeses can vary greatly in how many carbohydrates they contain. In general, fresh, soft cheeses are going to be higher in carbs, and hard-aged cheeses are going to be much lower with only trace amounts, if any. One cup of cottage cheese, for example, has 7 grams of carbs, whereas Parmesan has 0.5 grams in a 15-gram serve. And I get that these aren't really comparable portion sizes, but I mean, if you're eating cottage cheese, you're probably having at least a cup, and <laughs> it would be ridiculous for you to have a cup of Parmesan at a time. But hopefully you get the picture. <laughs> now there are exceptions to the soft cheese, hard cheese rule. Soft cheeses that are aged, such as brie, are an example of this. Brie has 0.1 grams of carbohydrates per a 15 gram serve. But anyways, I probably made that a little bit more confusing than it needed to be. So here are a list of cheeses with no carbs. Blue cheese, Parmesan, mozzarella, Gouda, feta, cheddar, cream cheese, buffalo mozzarella, goat's cheese, camembert, Monterey Jack, Colby Jack, Swiss, provolone, brie, and halloumi. Other animal products. Other products from animals are also great to include and contain next to no carbs. Chicken eggs, duck eggs, fish eggs, also known as roe, beef bone broth, chicken bone broth, fish bone broth, cod liver, and cod liver oil. Now before I get into the rest of the video, which contains vegetables, fruits, nuts and seeds, and fats, I'm going to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Butcher Crowd. And if you're in Australia, you definitely want to listen up. Butcher Crowd is a meat delivery service that delivers 100% grass-fed beef, pasture-raised pork and chicken, 100% wild salmon, and bone broth all across Australia. Basically, their range contains a lot of zero-carb foods that we've talked about in this video. They have a wide range of boxes to choose from and also the option to build your own. I have been subscribed to Butcher Crowd since the start of 2021, and I cannot recommend them enough. Every month, my delivery comes flash frozen. I put it in my chest freezer and take out what I need to defrost the night before. One of the reasons I really like Butcher Crowd, aside from the convenience, is that it can be really hard to make sure you are buying high quality meat, especially when it comes to pork and chicken. Chicken and pork that has been fed their natural diets will be lower in inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids and higher in other vital nutrients. And with Butcher Crowd, I can feel confident knowing that I am getting the best quality meat from ethically raised animals. They offer free shipping Australia-wide and all of their packaging is 100% certified carbon neutral and 100% recyclable. If you want to check out Butcher Crowd, you can head to healthcoachkate.com forward slash Butcher Crowd. I'll also put the link in the description box down below. And make sure to use code Kate15 to save 15% off your first box. Thank you again to Butcher Crowd for sponsoring this video. Vegetables. Now we're going to get into vegetables and fruit. But here's the thing. It is literally impossible for these foods to have zero carbs. They're always going to contain at least some small amount. Now, I spoke earlier about total carbs and how most people need to keep total carbs below 50 grams in a day, but some people prefer to track net carbs instead. The difference between total and net carbs is that net carbs subtract out fiber and sugar alcohol. Because these two substances cannot be digested by the body, so the idea is they don't count. So of course, vegetables and fruit contain fiber, which helps them to become lower in carbs than what you might initially think. Some countries such as Australia and the UK actually already have net carbs calculated on nutrition labels. What is written as carbohydrates already has the fiber and sugar alcohols subtracted, but other countries such as Canada and the United States do not. 
And usually if you're going by net carbs, you want to stay under 20 grams per day. So here is the list of vegetables that contain close to zero carbohydrates. Bok choy, arugula, asparagus, iceberg lettuce, romaine lettuce, butter lettuce, pickles, Swiss chard, celery, cucumbers, and cabbage. Fruit. Now, fruit is a bit more trickier because fruit is higher in sugar, which is carbohydrates. There aren't really any that are close to zero carb. I will say the best ones I recommend are avocado, olives, and coconut slush. Fat. And finally, we're going to finish off with fats and oils. And because these foods are quite literally fat, they only contain trace amounts, if any, protein and carbs. Now I'm going to break this down into three sections. The first is going to be the fats and oils that are best for cooking at high temperatures. The second one's gonna be ones that are okay for cooking at low temperatures. And the third is going to be ones that you should never heat at all. The best cooking ones include beef tallow, bison tallow, ghee, coconut oil, palm oil, duck fat, chicken fat, and bacon grease. The ones best for low temperature cooking include olive and avocado oil. The reason you don't want to use these oils for high temperature cooking is because the type of fat they are mainly made up of is sensitive to high heats. It oxidizes and goes rancid when heated too much, which causes free radical damage and inflammation in the body when we consume them. And just so you know, the smoke point is not the same as the point at which the oil oxidizes. And finally, the ones that you should have fresh and you shouldn't heat at all include sesame seed oil, flaxseed oil, cod liver oil, and MCT oil. Now, you might have noticed that I didn't include a lot of oils, including vegetable oil, soybean oil, canola oil. Yes, these oils do contain zero carbohydrates, however, they contain mainly a type of fat that is even more sensitive to heat than the type that is in avocado and olive oil. 99% of the time, these oils are already rancid by the time you buy them because they have to go through high heat processing to be extracted from their original food. So none of these make my list. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section down below if you are just getting started on a low carb diet or if you have been eating one for a while. Let me know down below. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. I upload two new videos every single week. And if you're in Australia, make sure to check out Butcher Crab. I will put the link in the description box down below. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on symptoms of insulin resistance, which you can check out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you want to check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.